Chapter seventy three of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter seventy three. Catherine Cockburn. Born sixteen seventy nine, died seventeen forty nine. Professor Craik. Mrs. Cockburn whose maiden name was Trotter, the daughter of a commander in the navy, was in youth said to have been distinguished by personal attractions. Her father died when she was very young, and her mother, who was nearly related to more than one Scotch noble family, was left in very narrow circumstances. Catherine began to show remarkable talent or vivacity of mind at a very early age. It is told that, while she was still a mere child, she one day surprised a company of her friends by some extemporaneous verses on an incident which had just happened in the street her first literary attempts were in verse one poem which she is stated to have written when she was only fourteen is printed among her works it is certain that in sixteen ninety five when she was only in her seventeenth year she appeared as a dramatic writer a tragedy written by her entitled agnes de castro having been brought out with success at the Theatre Royal in that year, and printed the following. This was followed by a second tragedy, entitled Fatal Friendship, which was performed in the new theatre, Lincoln's Inn Fields, in 1698, and printed the same year. And then came another tragedy and a comedy. These juvenile productions had probably all of them great defects, but the authoress of three tragedies and a comedy all both printed and acted before she reached the age of twenty-two was at any rate no common phenomenon and she had also it seems already been a long diligent student of metaphysics besides having while as we gather only in her teens ventured so far into the maze of theological speculation and controversy as to have been induced to leave the church of england in which she had been educated and to profess herself a roman catholic the first fruit of her philosophical studies appeared in may seventeen o two when she published anonymously a defence of locke's essay on the human understanding in reply to an attack upon it which was afterwards known to have proceeded from the learned and eloquent dr thomas burnet of the charter house about the beginning of seventeen o seven she returned to the church of england having previously changed her name for another mr cockburn is said to have been a man of learning and talent but he never was fortunate in obtaining much preferment and throughout the remainder of his life she had both the cares of a family to occupy her time and thoughts and very straitened circumstances to struggle with in seventeen twenty six he became a minister of an episcopal congregation at aberdeen her return to england seems to have been like the recommencement of existence to her or the awakening from a state of torpor in the last stage of her life notwithstanding broken health and some sharp sorrow her intellectual and literary activity emulated what she had displayed at the outset of her career in seventeen thirty nine she boldly set out upon what we may call a voyage round the world of metaphysics in remarks upon some writers in the controversy concerning the foundation of moral duty and moral obligation particularly the translator of archbishop king's origin of moral evil dr edmund law afterwards bishop of carlisle and the author of divine legation of moses warburton to which are prefixed some cursory thoughts of the controversies concerning necessary existence the reality and infinity of space the extension and place of spirits and on dr watt's notion of substance it was not printed till the year seventeen forty three when it was given to the world without the name of the author in the history of the works of the learned mrs cockburn here adopted dr clark's theory of the foundations of morality namely that the distinctions between virtue and vice are not created by the declarations or even by the will of the deity but arise out of eternal and immutable relations and essential differences of things not long after her strength was much worn down by frequent attacks of asthma to which she had been subject for many years i have she says 
very little prospect of tolerable health for any continuance my cough returned at the beginning of september and held me about two months but is now succeeded by such a difficulty of breathing that i do not know which is most grievous but between them i am reduced to great weakness yet she was at this time engaged upon a new metaphysical work which proved to be the most elaborate and able of all her literary performances her remarks upon the principles and reasonings of dr rutherford's essay on the nature and obligations of virtue in vindication of the contrary principles and reasonings enforced in the writings of dr samuel clark the rev dr thomas rutherford whose essay appeared in seventeen forty four had therein maintained the doctrine that the test and essence of virtue was its tendency to promote the good properly understood whether of the agent or others in other words was utility in the largest sense when her tract was finished mrs cockburn sent it to warburton whose theory on the subject of it was different both from rutherford's and her own and against whose views one of her previous works as we have seen had been in part directed warburton held that the distinction between virtue and vice was constituted by the arbitrary will of the deity notwithstanding this difference of opinion however he not only admitted the merit of the present work in the frankest and most cordial terms styling it in a letter to the authoress the strongest and clearest piece of metaphysics that ever was written but took upon himself the charge of finding a publisher for it and when it appeared in seventeen forty seven it was introduced by a preface from the pen of warburton in which he almost reiterated those strong expressions declaring it to contain all the clearness of expression the strength of reason the precision of logic and attachment to truth which makes books of this nature really useful to the common cause of virtue and religion this work appears to have attracted much more notice than anything that mrs cockburn had previously done she was subsequently induced by the advice of her friends to set about the preparation of a complete collection of her writings with the view of publishing it by subscription but this task she did not live to see accomplished at last in january seventeen forty nine she lost her husband who appears to have been about a year older than herself and this stroke probably shortened her own existence which terminated on the eleventh of may of the same year End of chapter seventy three recording by linda fredericks modesto california august two thousand twelve